See, I haven't given up on YouTube. Not intentionally. I unintentionally took a little break. Um, and by little break, I mean it's been not quite a full year. And here I am again. No, this is not a build video. I actually filmed a complete build video. Uh, just something fun. And um, there's a little, little, little issue with uh, getting it put out and hopefully it will be out soon. Um, it was supposed to go out last month, but hmm. Terms and conditions apply. Anyways, I'm here now and I don't have a lot to say, which is why this video has been extremely difficult. I've filmed this like four times now and basically I don't have a lot to say and uh, I spent most of the time trying not to cry. So aside from that, uh, let's just do a little wrap up on what you've missed in the last year because you're not on Instagram. I fed a squirrel. I moved some sand. I got all fancy for my isotunes. I did some sanding, played piano for squirrels, I went to Sacramento and hung out with some knife makers, I went to Virginia to hang out with a cat, I did some sanding, I fed a squirrel, I went to Atlanta and hung out with some knife makers, moved some garbage, moved some sand, fed a squirrel, I went to Nashville. I went to Italy, did some sanding, got burgled, fed a squirrel, got stuck in the sand. And now you're all caught up. So while I do keep busy like doing a lot of things that nobody ever sees because it's really not that in like it's it's specifically uninteresting. Like the things that I'm best at are things like organizing and cleaning and, you know, sanding. Those are the things that, unless there's like a huge reveal at the end, nobody wants to see that. It's so uninteresting. Um, so that happens, but also a lot of this happens. The children who play violent video games are more likely to be violent than reality. Despite having known my limitations no for years, my wife... So I'm trying to figure out how to um, maybe not even just like cut out this behavior that is not helpful to me, but maybe just like have it, right? Have. Half. You know what? That word sucks. Cut it in half. There we go. Half. I'll just cut that behavior by 50%. <laughs> so that brings us to my thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So if you don't know by now, which you absolutely should because Skillshare has been a longtime supporter of my channel, Skillshare is an online learning community and they have thousands of inspiring and creative classes like maybe you remember the embroidery class that I took. The squirrel is what really did it for me. I could not pass up the opportunity to learn how to create Gary's European cousin. So handsome. But they don't just have classes for, you know, learning new and interesting things. They have hundreds of career focused classes. So if you, like I, are trying to figure out what like professional you looks like, like this can help. There are a lot, there's a spider. There are a lot of things that I want to accomplish in my work life this year. And like, I mean, not, not just my work life, like also my personal life and not just this year, but like, you know, all, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm not good at managing myself. Like I'm very difficult to manage. What I do, like whatever it is that I do, even though I don't really like do anything, um, it's not very traditional. So um, I'm trying to figure out how to focus on my specific weakness in work and in life and in general, my specific weakness, and that's time management. Productivity Today, Managing Attention in the Digital Age with Kevin Sisker. So this guides you through improving your overall attention, decreasing your distractions, and figuring out how to prioritize the right tasks. I mean, who doesn't benefit from a good list? Also, 
for my fellow ADHDers who absolutely have to have captions on videos, there is a tab. It's labeled transcript and you can use that to follow along. It's a lifesaver. So whether your gir girls, <laughs> whoops. <sighs> so don't clap. So whether your goals are big or small or any size or shape or whatever, uh, Skillshare has a class that can help you with that. And right now, the first 1,000 people to join through the link in the description box below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So, you know, whatever your career path is and how professional, professional, I can't even say it. That's how unprofessional I am. However professional you want to be, Skillshare can help you get there. All right. Back to the show. A couple things that I specifically want to talk about because they were very, very big and influential things that happened to me this year. And um, we'll start with the good one. So I went to Italy with my sister. Uh, she and I have been traveling specifically to Italy together since 1998, where we attended a chamber music festival. I uh, used to be a classical violinist and she was a classical pianist. So we participated in a month long um, music event where we would go and play concerts around the small towns in the region of Molise. Um, so that place has always been really special to us and uh, we got to go back together and actually spend some time in the region and visit some of the small towns. And two in particular that I want to talk about, one was Campobasso, which is uh, like the county seat and we met a furniture restorer and uh, his name is Giancarlo and he is fantastic. We just happened upon him. So here's that story. And while my sister was drooling over this gorgeous cinquecento, I noticed that behind it was the most lovely workshop. And while I was drooling over that, the owner happened by and let us in. This is Giancarlo Vitulo. He is a furniture restorer in Campobasso. He inherited the shop from his father, Vittorio, who was a barrel maker. And now Giancarlo works alongside his son, Alessio, who just so happens to be a champion show jumper. It was such an honor to have Giancarlo show me his work and take the time to share his city's history of metalworking with me. It was donated by our Re Vittorio Emanuele okay. mm. to... Uh, gift for uh, Napoleone III. Mm -hmm. Ok? È okay. un regalo. Un regalo, bravo. Allora, questo qua era il lavoro che si faceva nel 1700-1800 a Campo Passo. And one, two, three. Thank you. Mm. So after we left Campobasso, we went to Frosolone, which is actually a town that's known for its knife makers. And uh, uh, we went there specifically to see the Museum of Cutting Things, which was fantastic. Uh, mille, se, 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 mille, uh, quando è stato inventato la polvere da sparo? 1780, 1780. And we happened upon this small knife shop um, and just went in to say, you know, hello and look at the knives and uh, found out that the owner of the shop, whose name is Rocco, he is a fifth generation knife maker and he was kind enough to invite me to his shop. Not, not just his place of business where he sells his knives, his workshop. So I went and spent the entire day in his workshop. He showed me how he assembles his knives, how he makes them. Uh, some of them are um, stock removal and some of them he hand forges just depending on what he can do. He's a one-man operation in a beautiful shop but he took he took the entire day just to hang out with me and show me what he does and uh, I, I cannot express how much patience it takes to have someone like me in a shop considering he doesn't speak English. He knows some words and I know some Italian words. Questo qua Corno di mucca. Sì. Questo lo tagli mm -hmm. e poi lo puoi addrizzare qua mm -hmm. sotto. Ok, in the press. Eh, con la pressa diventa piatto, diventa così. Lo metti nell'acqua sì. o sul fuoco mm -hmm. e poi lo qua sotto. He spent the day showing me his life and I don't know if you've ever experienced anything like this, but it's a really truly incredible thing. I'm not even a knife maker. Like, he's not getting anything from this. He just 
I showed an interest and he was kind and he was thoughtful and anyways he's fantastic I had a wonderful time we got to make a knife together actually so we made two knives we made a matching set because at the end of the day he keeps one and I keep one and then we have this shared memory together it was absolutely beautiful um, so if you ever <laughs> if you ever get a chance to go to Frozzolone go find Rocco Petrunti because he is fantastic on to the less pleasant thing that happened last year and that was <sighs> I got burgled and here's that video well it's finally happened someone broke in to the poof house and stole a bunch of my stuff um, my gorilla cart's gone my gorilla ladders are gone. All the tools that I had in here are gone. Um, they even took the little trash can that I have for Gary's peanuts. <laughs> like, you gotta be kidding me. It's just, um, it's real good to know that there's still people out there. Thanks a lot. It was really, really deflating, and I'm not gonna lie, it's been kind of hard to get back from that. It also doesn't help that it's winter and it's super cold, <laughs> and it's been raining an abnormal amount in the desert. And when it rains, I can't get to my property because the roads are all sand. So that's a, something that has to be fixed. Anyways, the point is, something terrible happened, and I, I don't always share everything with the world because a lot of things are very personal you know I've had in the past few years that I've been doing this I've had a lot of bad things happen people I know and love die and those are my things right those are things that I experience on a personal level the poop house I mean so many people have been on this journey with me until I actually start living there and it becomes like my safe space I feel like this is something that is shared with all of us um so it was this one moment where i didn't even think twice about it i was like this is happening to everyone who's been watching me and supporting me it's happening to all of us right now so i made a sad video <laughs> and i did not i did not expect the outpouring of love that i got i i absolutely expected people to be upset on my behalf and to share their thoughts and feelings but the response was huge um because everyone wanted to be supportive and kind and helpful. Um, I wasn't expecting anything from it, but a couple things did happen that really, really uh, meant a lot to me. And one of them was that, uh, so the company that makes the ladders that I use, the ladder and the workstation, the work platform that I use so much, especially in my second video on the poop house, um, they reached out to me and asked if they could uh, replace what had been taken. And so they sent me a new ladder and they sent me a new work platform. And <laughs> I need those so much to progress that I cannot even tell you like how much that meant to me. To, to have a company reach out and show some love and support was huge. Um, but the response from my community, um, especially 3D DIY Dave, uh, so people were asking me, you know, like, well, what can we do to help? What can we give you? What do you need? Did you start a GoFundMe? And like, I don't, well, I don't ask for help, first of all. I don't know how to do that. I've never been good at it. Even when I really, really need it, I just, you know, suffer. Because uh, that's what I do best. And, um, and it, emotionally it was too much for me to respond to all these kind messages that I was getting. I was just so emotionally overwhelmed, I couldn't handle it. So I just was like, nope, okay, I, I told you what happened, now I'm just gonna go hide for a while, which I definitely did. Um, so Dave, he, uh, without telling me, started to go fund me, and then shared that with his following. And um, a lot of people, a lot of you people, supported in that way and uh, I, I am beyond grateful and um, at first I was like no no that I can't I can't I can't accept this, this is like too much you know like it's I, what do I do what do I have to offer I don't even really do anything 
Um, and then, <laughs> then I went to the store and bought some things to replace, like, you know, like a rake. And um, actually, well, I mean, I have the, the two rakes because they do different things, and like a shovel. And they're like, I don't know, like 20 bucks a piece. Like, it adds up so fast. And even my beloved heavy duty trash bags, I go through a lot of those and they all cost money, you know? And so, while it's very, very difficult for me to accept help, um, and I'm not good at making it sound like I appreciate it. I do, I do, I do appreciate all of it. So, thank you. So here, here's where I'm stuck right now. The next step is I have to start rebuilding, right? So it's the things that's like intuitively you know what has to be done, but practically you've never done it before. I know that I can, I know that it'll take a lot of time, but I also know that I'm going to mess up and make mistakes. So I'm trying to be really careful about how I approach it to begin with. Um, a lot of materials have to be purchased. And that also means that like, I have to rent a truck <laughs> because I can't fit sheets of literally anything in a Prius. So I gotta rent a truck, I gotta get all these materials, get it to the house. Now that I know that someone has been scoping out my place and taking my things, I have to be more careful about the way I approach the situation. My plan has always been that when I start rebuilding the house, I will demo a single wall, reframe as needed, put up the sheathing, and then call it good. Next wall. So that's how I'm going to be approaching it because I, again, I'm working all on my own here, so I have to be really careful about the order that things happen in, the order of operation. So I'll start with the wall that has no windows because that'll be the easiest. Well, it does have a window. I'm not keeping it. It's not necessary. The, the place has great light without it. It's just, an, it's been boarded up the entire time anyways. I'm never going to miss it. So, um, so that's going to be how I approach it. So with that approach, that means I have to figure out how much of each material that I will need. And it doesn't seem like that big of a deal because it is a very small space, thank God. But it's a big deal for me because I've never done it. So I have, I have a real problem doing new things, real, real significant problems. So I keep on thinking myself out of actually starting. Um, but I have made a promise to myself to start this year. So I will. All right, I hope I've rambled on long enough like to make this semi-cohesive and not so long that um, you'll just stop listening and forgot. Either way, this is just me. That's what happened last year and um, here, here's to the new year. I don't have a glass in my hand, but um, it's over there, I can't reach it. Anyways, I appreciate everyone who's been sticking around, everyone who's been supportive. Um, I do give more frequent updates on what's happening on my Instagram. If you don't want to follow there, that's fine. That's your prerogative. Um, but it does mean you'll miss out on some things. Also, there is a small amount of behind the scenes that I do on my Patreon. Not nearly as much as I should because everyone over there is so good to me and I basically give them breadcrumbs. Um, but if anything big happens, they're usually the first to know. So if you want to be part of that, you can. And if you don't, uh, hopefully I will see you before another year is over. Actually, I won't see you at all. I don't see any of you. Hopefully you will see me again before another year is over. So...